scored Five. one. Gotcha. Rich, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Would you like to lead us in the pledge? We got five thirty. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Roll call. <laughs> Benny David. Here. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Wilty. Here. Brenda Simmons. Yep. Frank Scott. Here. Uh, approval of the agenda. Any additions or corrections, commissioners? I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Support. Motion from Commissioner Scott. Support from Commissioner Wiltsy. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Declaration of conflicts of interest. Are there any commissioners? I have none. I have none. Commissioner Simmons, or is there any declarations of conflicts of interest? Review of minutes. August 8th, 2024, regular meeting minutes. I've reviewed the minutes. Okay. Motion. We we'll accept them. Motion, Commissioner Wilty. I'll support. Support from Commissioner Scott. Any further discussion? Yes. Um, on consent agenda, third third motion down um, about the uh, adopt uh, the special millage question for authorization of the animal control and shelter services. Um, I did not make the motion. I went back and reviewed it on YouTube, and you made the motion, and and and. Uh, Brenda seconded it, so yeah, that can just be. Changed. Which one was that on, please? The animal control and. But yeah. what consent yeah. agenda? It's the third third paragraph down, for the meeting minutes for August eighth, twenty twenty four. It's uh, funding for the animal control. Uh, yeah, it is. Any other additions or corrections? We have a motion with support to approve with changes. Yes, Commissioner Wilty. That's correct. I support. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 4B, August 13th, 2024, Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes. I will make a motion to approve the minutes. We have a motion with Commissioner Scott. Support. Support from Commissioner Wilty. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Public comment and agenda item manners. What about the 13th? Pardon me? Did you already? Yep, I just did that. I said the 8th. We did that one and we did the 13th. Okay, sorry. Misunderstood. That's okay. Any public comment and agenda items in the room? Any public comment on the phone? Uh, correspondence. I don't think we've seen any correspondence, correct? If we did, I didn't see them. Uh, item seven, public hearing multi-county materials management plan agreement. The purpose of this public hearing is to provide an opportunity for citizens to provide input on the multi-county materials management plan agreement. Agenda item eight, public comment about the proposed agreement will be heard as required under section 5A of the Urban Corporation Act. Established rules for public comment will apply. Do we need a motion to go into a public hearing or... Can we just declare that we're going okay, to do? You can declare it. Any comments on the public hearing for multi-county materials management plan agreement? In the room? Commissioners, do you have any comments? No, no I don't. I don't have any. Any public comment on the phone? Need a motion to close. Any <clears throat> public comment on the phone related to this? We need a motion to close the public hearing. Or can we just close it? I have a question. What does this commit us to? I'm sorry. What does this agreement commit us to? This is the, the agreement that uh, puts us into the group of seven other counties to develop the material management plan. And this will be probably a three year process. It will be funded through grants from the state. And what we'll do is we'll be able to pool our resources with these other seven counties to actually develop the plan. 
uh, I think we'll have more likelihood of success uh, when it comes to implementation with, uh, with the help of the other partners. Okay. Thank you. Can we just close the public hearing? You can declare it closed, yeah. Uh, item 8A, consent agenda resolution to enter into an agreement to establish and manage a multi-county materials management plan. Uh, this resolution is sponsored by Administrator slash Controller Timothy Devahani. Under provisions of the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act, the Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy has determined that each county in Michigan must complete a materials management plan. The planning area of a single plan may include two or more counties if properly approved by the respective legislative bodies of each county. The Michigan Constitution permits counties to exercise jointly with another county any power, <clears throat> privilege, or authority which they share and which each might lawfully exercise separately. The counties of Clare, Gladwin, Gratiot, Isabella, Lacosta, Midland, Ogma, and Osceola wish to enter into an agreement to provide for and effectuate the process of a multi-county materials management plan consistent with the terms of proposed agreement. Approval of the resolution will also satisfy the notice of intent requirement by August 31st, 2024 deadline established by the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy. I'll make a motion. I will accept the resolution to enter into an agreement to establish and manage the multi-county materials management plan. Support. Motion by Commissioner Wolsey, support from Commissioner Scott. Discussion, Commissioner Simmons, do you have any further questions on it? Mm -hmm. What was the deadline on this? What was the term agreement? This is an August 31st deadline from the state, uh, all counties. Um, we actually had until July 6th, but we got an extension as right. this agreement was being developed. And uh, the state said we could take until August 31st to commit. But is there a deadline? I, I see that. I guess I, I asked deadline, but I meant like, um, what's the term on this agreement? It'll be three years. And that's the, the funding uh, formula that the state's come up with so far. So okay. a three-year process. Um, we could potentially be finished with our plan sooner, but um, you know, given the number of counties and uh, the meeting schedule rotating among these counties, I think probably we'll take all three. Any further discussion? I have none. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, new business. Um, 9A, Resolution to Proclaim Constitution Week in Ogemaw County. This resolution is sponsored by the Daughters of the American Revolution. A tradition of celebrating the United States Constitution was started many years ago by the Daughters of the American Revolution. In 1955, the Daughters petitioned Congress to set aside September 17th through the 23rd annually to be dedicated for the observ observance of Constitution Week. The aims of the celebration are to emphasize citizens' responsibilities for protecting and defending being the Constitution, preserving it for posterity, inform the people that the Constitution is the basis for the Americans' great heritage and the foundation of our way of life, and encourage the study of historical events which led to the framing of the Constitution in September 1787. Approval of the resolution will proclaim September 17th through September 23rd, 2024, as the Constitution Week in Ogemaw County. I'll make a motion. Go ahead and accept the resolution to proclaim that week. We have a motion, Commissioner Scott. I'll support that. Any dis any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Item nine B: Resolution to enter an agreement for housing of Ogemaw County inmates. This resolution is sponsored by the Law Enforcement Committee. Michigan statute requires that each organized county jail at its own cost and expense provide that the county see a suitable and sufficient jail and keep same and good repair. In lieu of providing a jail, each county may contract with, e with other counties for the use of such county's jail. Financial challenges facing Ogemaw County in fiscal year 2025 are well documented. However, Ogemaw County is obligated to provide adequate funding to the sheriff to operate or contract for a jail or lockup. Roscommon County has determined that by inmate population daily averages, the Roscommon County Jail has available space for housing those prisoners committed to the care and custody of the Ogemaw County Sheriff. Approval of the resolution will authorize an agreement with Roscommon County for housing Ogemaw County inmates subject to agreement by the Roscommon County Board of Commissioners. Move to accept the resolution. 
Support. Motion with Commissioner Scott. Support from Commissioner Wilsey. Discussion. Tim, go ahead. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to walk you through the document. It's it's been relatively key with the last couple of days. It's uh, different eyes of based on it. And I, I do want to emphasize it's not crucial that this resolution be adopted tonight. Um, we don't have to work through the uh, system there at Ross Common County for their approval as well. Our primary contact has been out of the office. We'll be back on Monday, so we don't have their direct feedback. The document that I've put in front of you tonight, um, it, it kind of mirrors what's on your iPad, but uh, this is the actual working documents. So you can actually see what's been struck out, what's been added, and there are a few things that have been added um, here just this week uh, after being you know, by our attorney. The um, uh, document, Intent tonight is that I think we've captured what we discussed in our meeting with Ross Common County on August 9th. I believe that's all been captured in here. Uh, but obviously, Ross Common County needs to look at it too to make sure that we have captured everything and, and that their understanding is the same as ours. We've also attempted to take this document uh, that was the draft that Ross Common had developed and uh, take the components of the original draft that we had proposed and make sure that they're all included. Again, I think we've done that and with the help of our attorney um, actually um, worked on the language a little bit so that it made a little bit more sense, but I actually had the points that he had. And you want to just walk through you know, what has changed since this was originally discussed um, or originally put out on the iPad, so the changes on page two. The changes I'm going to go over are the ones that are highlighted in yellow. Um, and, and those are language changes since we talked last week. And the first one uh, is a clarification uh, on the on the uh, term of the agreement and termination. And our attorney suggested what you've got highlighted in, in yellow, that either Ross Common or Ogoma can terminate this agreement at any time with or without cause by delivery of not less than 30 days prior notice to the other party. Um, the, the former language was just by mutual consent. This sort of locks it down a little bit more. It is with or without cause, it is in writing. Uh, just the preferred language of our council. Uh, number four was, um, in fact, I talked to the chair about this uh, a little bit earlier today about the rate. The intention, and commissioners Wilsey and Scott, correct me if I'm wrong, but the intention that we uh, come to uh, conclude uh, on August 9th was that we were paying for the beds we used, right? I understand. So, uh, and the language that was in the contract um, it, was a little fuzzy, I guess we'll say that. And the prosecutor actually uh, provided the language that you see in yellow uh, for a fee of 35 and no dollars uh, per day per bed physically occupied by Ogama inmates will be charged. It's understood that Ogama County will not be charged for any reserved unused beds if the number of Ogama inmates decreases under 35 per day. And that's a safeguard I think that we all had agreed on uh, going into the August 9th negotiation as well. That, that we didn't want to pay for something we weren't using. But at the same time, Ross yeah. Common is only committing to the 35 if they um, don't have enough room for inmate number 36, and we happen to have 36, we'll have to find another uh, place uh, to place that inmate. Uh, since we've um, had our meeting on August 9th, I did contact Clare County, and they are more than willing to take our inmates at the same rate. And I also had a call from Gladwin County um, late last week saying that they also might have uh, space available. But that's also getting to the point that we've talked about that more and more uh, our local jails are having, uh, well, their populations are down and they have room. And uh, it's uh, to our advantage in this case, so that if we do go higher than 35 and Ross Common doesn't have room, we do have a place to go. Page three, um, six. We didn't specifically talk about uh, juvenile inmates, but we don't incarcerate juveniles in our facility anyway. Uh, our attorney just felt that that was important to make sure that that's understood. Um, number seven, and this is another one I believe we discussed, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, uh, we um, aren't planning on going to Ross Common to pick up inmates who are unable to find transportation from the jail. Now, I'm not necessarily opposed to that, but I think we actually did discuss that just briefly about what happens when they're released. On the meeting of the night, we discussed that and that it would be up to the inmate would have to find transportation. Right. So 
know, make sure that that's understood by striking that from the agreement. And then the medical appointments and returns, we've outlined that in section 13, and it's just a reference to mm -hmm. the reader to that. I have a section. question to ask on 13. Let me interrupt. It said Ross Commons cost, unless otherwise provided here in Ogilvy County, shall reimburse Ross Commons County up to forty percent of the end. We're not in He's... facility medical. That's where we are. Did he get to thirteen already? I thought yes. it's been a mighty high. I'm still on three. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Did you get to the health care. We're, we're just about to. Yeah. That's... He's on page four. Just turning to page four. All right. Then I must have missed something back here. Yeah, it was just a reference to thirteen. But now we're at 13 uh, in, in the... And I heard the number 13, so I assume you were at 13. So, um, and, and you were gonna touch ahead of uh, where I was. So this is the 40% uh, of the in-facility medical care contract? Yeah. Okay. And my understanding is here, and I wish to share here is... Tom's here. Okay, good. Tom, my understanding is that we have a contract for medical care in the jail, is that correct? Does Ascota County pay for any part of that? I don't believe so. No, they don't. No, they don't. So why are we? Uh, this is what uh, Ross Common proposed. Their contract is 90,000, 40 percent of that is 36,000. We were scheduled if we were to proceed with a 24-7 operation, we budgeted 191,000 uh, for that same service in our facility. Uh, as we were discussing this with Ross Common on uh, August 9th, that 36,000 was uh, acceptable. It was a, you know, but I figured the cost of keeping there was part of all that because they'd had to pay that that fee for the um, for the medical. If we were there, we weren't there. Right. But we're saying we would like to be there, and we are. Um, then I don't want to... their population by about double as well. I mean, we're about doubling what they have in the facility, and they just asked for that. Because, I mean, that's a valid question. I, I, it really truly is, and I don't disagree. You know, that's something we may have been able to get out of in the past. Um, ask Oda County, and we, we, we didn't ask it. But you have a, that is doubling their population. Is that going to require more health care? Is, is... But the price of the health care won't be going up. It'll stay the same because they have a contract for inmates in 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 house. If they go to a hospital, a totally different thing. No, I agree. If they go to dentists, a totally different thing. This is this does not apply. I'm a, I understand that. We're talking about in house, right? So we don't know currently what their hours are now. When we went into this new contract, we did have them add on. Uh, we agreed to so many extra hours per week. I, I don't recall exactly how much it was, but I think I want to say six hours for some reason that's ringing a bell. But we did okay extra hours for nursing care in our jail. I mean, this this obviously is a lot more responsibility. When you double a population, it, it's a lot. I understand you have a valid point. We didn't we we didn't charge that. Why are they charging that? So they're going to pay that if, they, if we go there, we don't go there. But this is going to be extra services that they're going to have to provide. Is one individual a lot of money? Is are they going to have to add extra staff with doubling the population that they're serving? Are they going to have to give more hours? Did I don't we, have that answer. Did we have to do that? I just said we did. We gave that the nursing staff like six extra hours or whatever it was. I don't recall. Oh, you said hours. I thought you meant personnel. Either or, I, I I don't I don't know I don't know what they do up there. I'm just asking. Go ahead. And I don't know what the forty percent is. How much money is that? Okay, Commissioner Scott. You know that for a fact. Oh, Commissioner Simmons. Commissioner Scott. Well, I'm understanding understanding when an Oscoda inmate gets care, we bill their county for his care. No. We or they go, no, no, only if they go to a hospital or a dentist or something like oh, that. Geez, I thought they were. I thought we were home. billing them. No, no. If they if they took up aspirin, I thought we were billing for it. Nope. Hold on, hold on. Now we do get when it's a prescription because when we do claims, you do see that, and they do separate Ogemo County versus yeah. Ascoda. That's cool. not. We don't know what care all they're they're getting, but no, when they require care in house, we don't see a bill for that. We only see a bill when they go external or when they get a prescription. We're paying twice the amount of money that Rob Scott pays. Yes. 
And we weren't getting any recouped on any of that? No. I thought we were. She's got a valid point, a very valid point. <laughs> but we meant we- We should have, have been billing for that. Uh, Our in-house medical for 2025, if we would stay as is, be $191,000. Yes. I already know that. Jeez. So that may be a valid question for Ross Common County is, you know, why do you want 40%? Like, is it going to require extra hours, extra service? I would have to say, logically, it should. I mean, they're literally doubling the number of... My concern was what the 40% was. Yeah. $36,000. $36,000. And it's not 190000 like we're paying now. Correct. And I understand that now, but I did not want, so I have no idea what 40% is. Okay, go ahead. Uh, further down on uh, section 13, just to clean up on the um, emergency um, offsite medical care, we um, worked out in this agreement that Rock Cameron County would provide the trans would provide staffing if. Uh, there were a need for offsite care for less than four hours. If it's more than four hours, Ogemaw was responsible. The uh, language here is just changed to include transportation and staffing. The previous uh, proposal just said staffing. So this uh, just again clarifying it's it's the whole package. On um, page six, a uh, very uh, minor uh, items by the first two paragraphs of section 17, just adding the words to the extent uh, allowed by law. This has uh, always been sort of a confusing section to me when it comes to particularly indemnification. There are certain rules when it comes to public uh, bodies, whether they can indemnify each other or not. This language covers it. If it's allowed, then yes. If not, by the way, it's not allowed. And then um, in that third paragraph, a sentence inserted in the middle, nothing here and shall abrogate the party's right to assert governmental immunity as a defense. The other change on page 8, number 26, just clarifies that any amendments to the agreement would be in writing and signed by both parties to the agreement. That's pretty common language. And then the last change that's been added, as the uh, first draft was set out, was uh, section 28 on page 9. Well, anybody in this case, we would have our board chairs uh, sign the contract there. Uh, stating by signing that they're the ones truly authorized to do so. And certainly the case in Oldham County. Um, I can't speak to Ross Common, but I uh, would be surprised if it's any different. So those are the changes. And like I said, it's not imperative that you approve this resolution tonight, so long as we agree to this is the language that we uh, want to agree with uh, at Ross Common. Uh, and we can certainly wait for Ross Common County to adopt it first before we do, if, if that's your wish. Uh, to me, it doesn't really matter. It's six and one half dozen the other who adopts it first. I, I got two, I guess, comments or, or concerns. The first one is, as I did, I uh, I got a phone call uh, last night from Commissioner Simmons um, after she had had an opportunity to review this with definitely some some questions. So I did reach out to you this morning and, and specifically that number four. Um, the government did seem very confusing to me. And, and after seeing all these changes, after, your, after when you and I spoke, it, you felt it was still pretty clear with, with how it was stated in there. But but now all of these changes. So I guess before we this resolution was put on our iPads, did our legal team look at this and agree with all of this? This is a lot of changes that occurred today. Yeah, and this is part of our, our legal team's review. And the prosecuting attorney, I need to give credit to for the language on four to clarify you know, exactly what we are, who we're paying for and when. But yes, and the, the attorney also gave us that original draft that we went into the meeting on August 9th with, and we explained to Ross Common that we would have our attorney look at this and make sure that the elements he felt were important uh, were included in this draft, because this is the draft they started with. So that's what we concluded with today uh, in the uh, majority of the changes you see here. And you can see that there's Relatively minor, uh, but important. They are, but they're not. I mean, these are a lot of changes that if all of this conversation wouldn't have taken place today, these changes wouldn't have been made. Um, to me, that's that's pretty concerning, especially with the, the big question was that we're going to be charged $35, $35 per day for 35 inmates, no matter what number we have in there. Um, I mean, there's a lot of changes made throughout this. So that makes me a little uneasy. Um, well, I, I agree that... 
oh, I'm I'm not done. I agree the verbiage is was is much better and much clearer here. My other comment is I know um I'm not comfortable making a uh, uh I personally would like to table this at this point in time. And the reason I'm gonna state this is my rationale and 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 then I'll give everybody an opportunity is because if Ross Common hasn't had an opportunity to look at this and agree with this, it, we're just going to end up bringing this back and going over and over and over this. Um, I feel like this is was a decent start. Um, and I feel like all of these changes that have been made in the last couple of hours is alarming. Enough to where I think this is going to require some, some more time. Commissioner Scott. I see most of these changes being... Uh, so superficial of being uh, just wording uh, set. Uh, I mean, just uh, just uh, cleaning up uh, our our it's our uh, attorneys because their attorney has a little, already looked this over. So one attorney likes it written this way. Our attorney likes it written this way. No attorney. There is no one train of thought for every attorney in the United States that writes everything the same way. They all look at it differently. So you take number three there. It's just a couple of words difference. And they put Oscoda and, and Ross Common in, 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 the, in the same place, in the same sentence, but in a different place in the sentence. I don't see any, I don't really see anything that's so big there. Um, when you when you look at some of these other paragraphs, uh, you know, medical appointments and return to hospitalization as set forth in section thirteen. That's all. That's all the differences as set forth in thirteen. Uh, they put in won't house juvenile inmates. Neither jail does already, but it's just a just a sentence they put in because they just wanted us to be covered. Um, uh, you know, they, they crossed out inmates released none, uh, and unable to uh, obtain transport. Well, even our jail has said that they just, they're done, they go, they leave. Um, they had served their time and they left. A couple of, couple of lines drawn through. Um, most, most of the, and to the extent allowed by law for those two two paragraphs. I mean, these are just small little things. I know that you turn the page and there's yellow, but it's not, I think you're overcomplicating it. Comment. it oh, that, hold on. That's all. It, Commissioner Wilson, do you have anything? Um, no, I mean, the magnitude of this is huge and I want you guys to feel comfortable with the agreement, the contract. Um, you know, we needed a few things changed, changing them, so. Jody, uh, the Ross Common Administrator, Tim, will be back on Monday. Right. So I have no problem tabling this. <laughs> Commissioner, Commissioner Wolfley, or, geez, sorry, Commissioner Simmons. The significance on this could have been very costly to us if the change wasn't made. Because they said in paragraph four that they were going to reserve 35 bets. And we paid $35 a day for 35 bets. No matter what the what the inmate fluctuated to, so if we had twenty three people in there, we'd be still paying for thirty five beds. That's what that paragraph said, and that went before a lawyer. And I let five or six other people read the same paragraph, and they they interpreted it the same way I did, and that is pretty doggone significant as far as dollars and cents go. Okay. Commissioner yeah. Commissioner Mayhew, anything? I like I I'm I'm gonna make a motion to table this at this point in time until Ross Common has an opportunity um to uh talk about it or and look at it. I have one question. I have a motion on the table. Would anybody like to support it? Yeah. I want to Commissioner, say. now it's time for discussion. I didn't know there's a motion. <laughs> you make them so fast, they just slide right on by. <laughs> so but if Ross Common agrees to this, uh my main concern was paragraph four. That was my biggest concern. And also my other concern was paragraph 13, about 40%. I know what the extra dollars are for that now. Did not, and that's significant savings. But paragraph four was, was really important to me because I didn't want to pay for 35 beds. We only had 23 inmates up there. 
So if they agree to this, do you, do you, what do you think about this as it's written now with the corrections that's made in it? I don't think it makes any sense approving something at this point in time when the other party hasn't looked at no, it. I understand that. Okay, hold on. I wasn't finished. Sorry. When the other party hasn't had an opportunity to look at it. Um, it the reason being is because then we're going to continue to go back and forth. Um, I would much rather have their approval and then we can make a decision from there. Is this verbiage that I looked at this afternoon that's been changed much clearer? Absolutely. Okay, that's what I needed to know. So I didn't say I agreed with it. I said it's much clearer. Sounds really and, and this is a pretty long, lengthy contract. I mean, we need to make sure that all parties understand what it's saying and are, are agreeable. This is a five year 2024 to 2027. So this is a big deal. Three years. So I, there's a motion on the floor with uh, support. Any further discussion? And the motion is what, please? Will you repeat that? Table this. Until we get a report back from Ross Common. At this point in time to table this. Which meeting? Why do I want to table it for eternity? To the committee of the whole meeting? To, it will be further discussion at the committee of the whole. It has to be and then we'll go from there. Meeting, right? Exactly. Right, the board rules would have it taken up again at our next regular meeting as in the form of a resolution, but I certainly believe. And then we make a motion to take it off the table. Yeah. So there's a motion with support. Roll call vote. Charles Holtze? Yes. Brenda Simmons? Yep. Craig Scott? No. Jenny David? Yes. Roger Mayhew? Yes. Item 9C, discussion regarding board communication with news media. Um, I actually asked, I talked to Tim and asked uh, for this to be put on. I thought we had a policy um, in the past written for this. Apparently we don't. It's been discussed a few times, but there's been no no policy that, that uh, Tim could find. Um, I asked this after our previous meeting when the only dis things kind of, in my opinion, uh, a lot of assumptions were made after our last meeting. Uh, we, as a committee of the whole, made a decision to not put something, a millage on the ballot to support the jail. Um, that did not get support, and now that escalated to the jail closing. Has there been talks with uh, Ross Common? Yes. Is there a contract? Yes. Has any decision been made? No. The news media was, um, we were on Channel 12 the following night. Um, it was a... a uh, broadcast that was made and things have escalated from there. Um, my concern is from a liability perspective, what uh, uh, what liability that puts us at with various commissioners talking to the media. Um, I have been contacted a few different times. Uh, I either direct them to Tim specifically, our legal team, um, or I just don't return the phone call. So I guess I want to know, obviously, there's some hot topics right now. Um, I don't want any of us, including the county, getting any type of uh, legal problems. Is is How do you guys feel about forming a policy on this? I feel that's what our legal team is there for, and that's what Tim is there for. Mr. Simmons. I think there should be a policy on that, because there's five of us. We could all say something a little bit differently, and it could be interpreted differently. So I think it comes from one one head. We're a lot safer and a lot less liable to get into trouble. Commissioner Mayhew. Yeah, sounds good to me. Commissioner Scott. How far does this go? What is it just news media? Doug's sitting right here. He's called me before. I can't talk to him. Is that what you're saying? I can't talk to him if he calls me? I'm asking for a policy to be drafted. Well, to, he's news media. I, I wasn't done. Well, I wasn't done. Oh. I had the floor. Go ahead. You jumped in. I apologize. I now, you were... who's got the floor? Go ahead. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. He's the news media. If he calls me, am I allowed under your policy to talk to him? If, if, if I get a question at a township meeting, am I supposed to say, well, hey, I can't give you an answer because I got to refer you to the administrator or to the chair? And where do we go with this? I, I sit in the bakery in the morning. If somebody's got a question for me about county business because they watch me on YouTube, 
Oh, hey, I'm sorry. I can't give you that answer. You have to call the administrator and ask him. Are we going to go that far? Are you restricting my First Amendment rights, saying that I got a, a, a I got the freedom of speech? Yes, I agree with you. There's five of us, and we could have five different opinions, but that's exactly what we got. Five different opinions. It wasn't the big well, one. Commissioner Simmons, no. We've heard this, we've heard this thing, we've heard this over and over again, the jail closing. But I I I mentioned I said in the last meeting, state law says we can't close the jail. So the jail will not close. So if you say it's going to close, that's a false statement. Now, is that the kind of statement you want to make to the news media? A false statement? Or do you want to say a, an accurate statement? I was on the TV. What I said was accurate. They, they said, he said, tensions are, uh, there's tensions. I said, yeah, I agree with you. There's tensions. I said that the, our budget's in bad shape. I said we didn't have a fund balance and haven't had one. That's accurate. Um, I said, nobody wants to lay anybody off. I, I think that's pretty accurate. Unless one of you want to lay somebody off, I don't think you do. I, what I said was accurate. I don't know. Are you mad? Because the man said, well, Craig Scott was right when he said it. I, I don't know how far you want to go. Can't talk to TV, but we can talk to the newspaper. Or we can't talk to a newspaper from out of town, but we can talk to the one in town. I can't talk to the, I can't answer meeting uh, uh, people's comments at, at township meetings or any place. Where do you want to take it? How far do you want to go? I'm done. Commissioner Wilsey. Um, I mean, I see from, from your point, I, I obviously don't want things to get all Willy Wonka and one person saying one thing, one person saying the other. I think Commissioner Scott brings up a lot of valid points. It just seems like this could be a, <clears throat> a situation where, uh, you know, it really could uh, be kind of hard to decipher what's right, what's wrong. I'd like to refer to Tim and his years of experience with this. Tim, what have you done in the past? Have you had these type of situations where you've asked for, commissioners have asked for this type of actions? And, and if you have, what have, what have you seen from it? Yeah, I, I've seen both uh both approaches, you know, one like ours where there really was nothing mentioned, and then one that the you know, public comments are directed to, and there's in the board rules just a statement that said this is where you direct them. Usually, it's the administrator. It has been the administrator and or board chair and spokesperson of the board, but you do have a very fine needle to thread here. Uh, Commissioner Scott's right. There, there is a First Amendment issue. Um, in fact, uh, maybe our attorney is prepared to talk about that a little bit tonight and just exactly how you do that. Uh, but at the same time, it's good, I think, to have a, a policy that just says, you know, I think it helps the media. If you need an official comment, go to fill in the blank. Uh, that doesn't necessarily prohibit anybody else from talking, but, you know, when you get it in your board rules, um, you know, I, I think it just memorializes it so that when you are called, you can say, okay, is this a situation where I should or I shouldn't? Uh, you know, again, uh, in recognition of the First Amendment rights. So, again, it's a fine needle to thread, but to answer your question, I've seen it both ways. It has worked well uh, where it is in the uh, board rules. And again, just because it helps direct people to, okay, here's who I need to call, and they don't have to worry about getting you know, somebody into trouble later on. But entirely your call as a board, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. Don, do you have anything to add to that? You're muted if you're trying to talk. What about me? There he goes. Hi there. Hi, did you hear the question? Yes, I think so. Yeah, it looks like the video is still up, but that's okay. Uh, first of all, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I've had some technical problems in my end. So if you had asked me a question in the first 15 minutes or so, I was still working through some technical um, issues on my end and um, you know, I think what we've seen in the past that does seem to work when this issue comes up is if members of the Board of Commissioners direct media questions, and, and I think typically the issue comes up with media questions to the county administrator, 
the county administrators uh, skilled in answering and all county administrators are typically skilled in answering questions that come up from the media in a way that protects the county um, and preserves the positions of the county so that the you know so that the board has options going forward and um, so that's typically that's that's typically the way we've seen this kind of thing handled in the past um, it could be preserved that what I just said in a policy, or it could be something that's added uh, perhaps to your board rules. So we could, we could look at doing that if you'd like. Um, and I'm you know, happy to answer any other questions you might have. Any questions for Don, commissioners? Commissioner Simmons? I just have a comment. Go ahead. I think when it comes to news media, be a newspaper or the radio or TV, it should go to the county administrator. Because I mean that's being broadcast all over, and I would like to have yeah. one talking mouth, not five talking mouths. Any further? I didn't questions? say you can't. Excuse me. I didn't say you can't talk to people at the bakery. I didn't say you can't talk to people at the laundromat. I'm just saying when it comes to news media and being interviewed, it should be the county administrator, and that way we get the same message across instead of five messages. Then we could get into trouble. Any questions for Don? Commissioners? No question. Let me clear one thing up. Once Mr. Camp from Flint or Channel 12 called me, I called Tim and told him I got a call from Terry Camp, and he said he just got off the phone with him. <clears throat> and I said he wants to interview me. And uh, I just said, I'm just going to tell him accurate statements. That's it. I mean, I talked to the man for 15 minutes on camera, but what what was I there? A total of 12 seconds or something? 30 seconds at the most? You know, I mean, you talked to him for a half an hour or so. And what, you were on there twice as long as me. You know, I mean, I, I, it's such a, it's even the paper, we've, we've talked about this with the paper, is they can't print the whole meeting in the paper. So you can't take you can't take the context of of just an article and and know everything that goes on, you know. That's why I hope people watch this YouTube. They can see the whole thing. They can see the context we talking and and everything. I checked with Tim, and I would continue to do that. I. I, I, you make a valid point. And to me, that's that's what is alarming is that you can do a 15 minute interview and only brief things can be taken out of it. Um, and it can be taken out of context. And again, my only reasoning for doing this is to protect the county from any type of liability or us individually. Um, I'm in favor of, again, of directing the media specifically and only the media to our county administrator for interviews. As far as what is taken off of, I mean, these are these are public meetings. Anything can obviously be taken off of them. But as far as the media itself, um, I'm in I'm in favor of something that protects us uh, and the county as a whole. So, other thoughts, Commissioner Wilson, do you have a thought? Um, no, I mean this was good conversation. Um, I think probably moving forward, I, I'll agree with you and Commissioner Simmons um, regarding media, whether it be paper, radio, news, news channels. I'd, I'd rather take that off my shoulders anyways and just have them go to our administrator. I have no problem with that. Can we draft a policy? I think. Yeah, I'll work with that. Uh, and um, I would suggest that it should be the board rules as opposed to a standalone policy because it really is talking about you. I think that'd be an appropriate place for it. Claims. Uh, Commissioner Wilson and I looked over claims. They totaled $213,222.76. I'll make a motion to approve claims. No support. Uh, discussion. Commissioner Wilson, I think. What do we see on there? We see the medical examiner, three month, uh, which was quite a bit. Yeah. We seen the election reimbursement for the election, which is going to be reimbursed. Yeah. We seen some trainings on there. We seen some lights for some jet skis. I think uh, you're gonna. Yeah, I haven't got that answer yet, but I'll look into that more for labor for jet skis. 
Um, what else did we see on there? Let's see anything else that really stuck out. Did you, Tim? No, I didn't. Oh, there was a, a puppies, a group of puppies that were brought in. Oh, right before retirement? Sure. Yes, through animal control, which was quite a large bill, $1,200 and $133 and $402 um, for that. That was quite a quite a bit. But it, there was a, um, right on the statement itself, there was an explanation, which was helpful. Any further questions about claims? Roll call vote. Craig Scott. Yes. Jenny David. Yes. Roger Mayhew. Yes. Charles Wilkie. Yes. Brenda Simmons. Yes. Uh, unfinished business, commissioners. Uh, administrator slash controller report. You've got the written report on the iPads. I do have uh, a couple of topics here. I need a little bit of direction from you. Um, I, the time is uh, running out on our fiscal 25 budget and just some of the changes that we have incorporated will require certain notices to go out in, in a timely basis. For instance, uh, the direction we're headed with the jail uh, we do have a contract with Oscoda County that would require a 30-day notice of our intention. That unfortunately will happen between now and your next meeting. And what I'd like you to, to tell me if you'd like something else different to happen before all these notices uh, come up, that I will just proceed to issue those notices. Um, we can uh, put a caveat in there saying we, we're sending you this notice per contract. However, if the board changes its mind in the next 30 days, we'll reconsider. But uh, the 30 day thing, uh, if we wait until say uh, September 26th, when we actually move to adopt the budget, that's gonna be an issue because then we're into well into October, well into the next fiscal year before the notice would take us next. Go ahead, Commissioner. I have a comment. At, at our last meeting, um, my understanding is you said closing the jail, um, because we were talking about putting a millage on and stuff, would be like $900,000. I mean, I wasn't the only one that heard that. Is that a true statement? I'm not following the question. If we close the jail, mm -hmm. it was said last meeting that we would save $900,000. I was not the only one that heard you say that. I think the number I used was 400,000. No, it's 900,000. Well, 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 Commissioner Simmons, let him finish. That's the case that I would have misspoken. Uh, the budget that you've uh, been given, there is a total that shows you that surplus at the end. So that's the revenues over expenses. And with this plan with the jail, the overall savings was, I'm going to say in the neighborhood of 450,000. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, but that's helping to build that fund balance that we've discussed uh, over the well, over the course of the entire budget process. Uh, so that's that's the number I'm working from. That's, again, roughly 450000 A comment? Commissioner Woodsey? Um, as chair of the Budget Committee, Commissioner Simmons, uh, Tim, what day was roughly, or maybe Commissioner Simmons, you could tell me, when we had the budget meeting where you laid out the carpet for us? That was That was how long ago? Six weeks? Eight weeks ago? I have to go to my calendar. Okay. Well, anyways, it was a while ago. We've had some meetings since. Well, July 12th is a number I just heard, which that sounds about right. No time at all ever during these budget meetings was there ever a $900,000 mark stated. It was very clear that we were surprised by the lack of savings, but that $400,000 mark was stated on that first meeting, that first budget meeting, we read it, we had it in front of us. So I, I guess I'm confused why you seem so disappointed that you thought we were gonna save $900,000. I respond to that? Please. I didn't, I didn't think it. I heard the administrator say that, and I was not the only one. And my understanding was also, just like yours, was 400,000. And we were talking about a millage, and I was probably ready to put that millage on. But when he said 900000 because I'd already talked to the townships about it, too. They thought it might be a good idea to put a millage on. And then when I talked to him after the meeting, I said, man, he said 900000 He said, yeah, I know. I said, well, I'm not willing to sacrifice $900,000 to 
That's why I changed that, because that's what was said last meeting. Go and look at look at the recordings. It was said last meeting, 900,000, and I was not the only one that heard that. Where you're getting the the numbers that you're looking at, and I just pulled up the uh, board packet from last meeting. It's I got it from what was said by our county administrator last meeting. That's where I got those numbers from, and I wasn't the only one that got them. Are you done? Yes. Okay. Where you came up with that 900, where the discussion was at the committee of the whole last week was under the board packet. We were looking at the bottom numbers for the uh, fiscal year 2025 general fund budget draft for the different scenarios. Uh, we were looking at those numbers talking out loud and that's what we asked for specifically because we're I'm not part of the, um, uh, the committee for um, the budget committee. So I wanted a actual figure of what changing the jail to a lockup facility, what that savings would be. And nobody had a calculator. Nobody had the exact figure. And so we were kind of going between these numbers here. And there was a, originally it said 450. And then by looking at these numbers, there was a $900,000 difference. And that's, I believe what Commissioner Simmons is talking about with the various scenarios that were given to us with these numbers at the bottom. So with changing the, is that your question? Is what is the actual savings of changing the jail from the current running to just a lockup facility? Do we know that exact number? My understanding was what was said last meeting was 900,000. That's why I wasn't gonna pursue that knowledge. That was the only reason I wasn't gonna pursue it. Go ahead. There's going to be a difference between first year and following years also. I understand. There is there is separation costs that that's going to incur in the first year that will not incur in the in the following year. Um to get the yes, in order to have a budget, you're going to have a set number within the budget. It's going to be in print. But there's so many different variables put into this. We are using very liberal um calculations for this so that there is a cushion uh, built in. Uh, we're not trying to do this as thin as we possibly can. That would not be responsible to do that. So to just say that that's the number exactly and that's going to come out at the end of next year, I highly doubt it. I think it'll be... I. I think it'd be better than that, but uh, but there are some first year costs that will not incur later on. That's my one of my points. That's it. Anything to add to that? Where in our where in our packet from from last week are we looking at the exact savings? It should be somewhere under the. If you're looking at the August 13th meeting, you'll want to punch item yep. 5A, yep. which is the jail millage. Got it. That's what I was looking at. Resolution, and then you've got the three scenarios. We we'll probably do there. So the first one was if the millage were approved at the 2024 staffing levels, and you can see where the revenues and expenditures would lie. Uh, the next one is, again, you got the detail after that. The next one is scenario number two, which would be staffing at the 2023 staffing level. And then scenario number three was the uh, projection, should the millage be requested and then failed, what would that do to the overall uh, general fund budget? And you can see that would have dropped the surplus from in the neighborhood of 460000 down to 260000 uh, for that uh, first quarter of fiscal year 25 to continue the operation at status quo. Uh, if a number 900,000 was spoken. It definitely was a mistake. I don't recall ever using that number. It's not one that's propped up in any of these scenarios. Uh, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm saying I don't remember it. It, 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 it did. I don't recall the exact conversation, but. Any other questions, Commissioner Simmons? 
Tim, did you have anything else to add to the report? Um, just one other item. We did originally have the district court on the agenda for tonight. The court called yesterday and said they still weren't ready, but they will be here at Community the Hall next week to go over uh, uh, proposal that they have for their budget, uh, some uh, staffing adjustments are included. And I did want to ask the board, just uh, because we still have a couple of meetings, are there any other departments specifically that you'd like to hear from that you haven't already heard from? Thanks, sure. Um, well, one point that I want to ask, uh, next week is the fifth Thursday. Are we going to have a meeting? No. It won't be. So it'll be two weeks ago. From that, right. that yes, we'll have the yeah. mini as a whole. Uh, as far as another department, uh, when will the transit board meet next? Well, uh, it'll be the third Thursday in September. Okay. You know, then I think maybe later in the month, maybe we could hear from transit as far as. I know that's not a general fund thing, but I know you got some decisions to make because of lack of millage. So I'd just maybe like to hear about the special uh, millage on that side of it. As far as a general fund, uh, as far as a general fund department, uh, I don't know of one. If we're hearing from the courts, that's enough for me. Commissioner Wilson? Right now, I'm fine. Commissioner Simmons? Um, I have a question to ask. My understanding is the MTA meeting is going to be on the 27th, which is a Tuesday at 6 p.m. at Churchill Township. Is that correct? Correct. I just want to make sure yeah. that it's going in the right place. Would you like to see any department heads related to the budget at the Committee of the Whole meeting? I think uh, the courts would be fine. Okay. Commissioner Mayhew? Yeah, probably enough. Elected officials. Of, did you have anything <laughs> else, Tim? No. I'm sorry. Elected officials and department heads. Clerk? Uh, Brett Gildner, your Ogemont County Clerk. Uh, I just got back from probably the most beneficial training that I have been to since I've taken office, um, the Michigan Association of County Clerks. We meet three times a year. This one is our big one where um, it's a couple days long. Uh, but the topics that we were presented with were really informative. And um, if I haven't had enough changes with election law and anything to do with election, there's more coming. Um, so, but overall it was just, it was really good. Um, I was really happy that I was able to attend and we got done with the canvas the Friday. I think we left the building. It was like quarter after five, but we were able to certify the election. Um, board of Cam or State Board of Canvassers meet on August 24th is when they start. There was one person who filed for a recount, uh, coming township supervisor. Position will be recounted once the state board of canvassers have completed. Um, so I'm looking at that probably the beginning of September. Um, that is it. We have uh, three people so far who have filed for write-in for November. Um, so Another big election. That's it. Elected officials, department heads in the room. Come on up. Didn't see you back there. All right. <laughs> By the way, this is for 911. We just covered it. So uh, we just don't want anyone to mess with it. We don't know what it is. We just don't want anybody. Hi, I'm Julie Darton, District Director, MSU Extension. Um, I haven't seen you all in a while, but. Um, we had a very successful fair and once again, very strong partnership with the folks that are um, leading in the Ogama County Fair. Um, really excited about our continued collaboration and positive um, efforts out there. Um, and uh, in addition to that and all the success that we saw that youth were demonstrating at the fair, um, we had our um, 
community nutrition instructor at the Rose City Summer Recreation Program in July, um, helping youth understand how they can incorporate physical activity into their recreation program. And they actually calculated the distance that walking around the gym would create. Um, so it's not only about physical activity, but also math. Um, and uh, they learned how long a lap was and how many laps they would need to um, walk to create a mile. Um, and this, you know, we have some quotes from youth saying, you know, now I'm going to walk with my friends because I'll be able to keep track of how many miles I'm walking. Um, and that's a six week program uh, that the Rose City is running, but we were there in partnership with them. So it's another example of how we're adding value to things that are already great that are happening in the county. Um, in another effort of uh, working with the Commission on Aging uh, to deliver our Tai Chi for arthritis and falls prevention program, which works with older adults um, on, you know, low impact movement that can help them, you know, remain active and um, maintain balance as they as they're encountering life. Um, and it seems to be the time to talk about Rose City because um, Saturday, uh, I will be at the Disaster Preparedness Expo. I was invited by Mike Bowers um, and his committee to be part of the Disaster Preparedness Expo. MSU Extension uh, does provide information about disaster recovery and preparedness um, as part of our educational programs. It's not something that we really highlight, but obviously we have a lot of different areas in which we can have influence. So we'll be sharing information that we've developed about how to help youth, for example, cope with the emotions of uh, in the aftermath of a disaster, how to plan ahead if there's a disaster, how to recover financially, um, both for farmers, homeowners. Um, and then there's the inevitable food safety questions like, can I still eat, if I lose power, can I still eat all this food? Um, or if my house floods, can I still get the things that I can and eat those? Um, so we provide information about all those things and we'll be there at the Disaster Preparedness Expo. I did bring some copies of the flyer because I didn't know if y'all had seen that and I haven't been able to attend every meeting. So you may have heard about this from Mike and I apologize if it's a second time that you're hearing it. Um, and uh, that's all I have today. So I'll just pass you your own. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Julie. You're welcome. Any department heads or elected officials on the phone? Yeah. Uh, matters from the floor. Commissioners? I have none. Motions for adoption? I have none. Commissioner's reports. Commissioner Wilsey. Uh, just it was at EMS board meeting uh, before our meeting today. Uh, today is the uh, deadline for the uh, director applications. Oh. We did receive uh, 10 applications. Um, now me and another board member, uh, we will be going through those and advising who we feel should be interviewed and that will uh, go to the board. And within the next couple weeks, we should have interviews set up. Um, they're short staffed out there. We do have some team members um, that are injured. So there makes them even more short staff, but morale's doing uh, doing okay, and uh, they're hanging in. Uh, transit, we had our transit meeting uh, last week. Uh, Tony Dubé, our new transit director, he's uh, he's coming along pretty well. He's really happy that Ray's still there. Um, he's learning a lot. A lot of the stuff is new to him. Um, you know, we have a very strong transit committee. Really looking forward to what uh, what Mr. Dubé is going to bring to the table out there as our transit director. Um, yes, he was discouraged with fact starting off and the millage not passing. Um, he understands the importance of making sure that the day-to-day -day budget is run properly and um, administrator administrated the correctly. Um, he, him and Ray are working on um, on a budget for that, so us committee members can work with him to also assist him if he's uh you know feeling a little nervous about something or just has any questions so we have a really good team out there um we're going to continue staying in close contact with tony because it, it is a big position and in, um this transition period is very important uh not only for uh the riders of of the transit our resident but also for the team members out there 
Uh, this past Monday, we had our Northern Commissioners meeting up in Roscommon. Um, I chose to uh, join that via Zoom. Um, another very beneficial meeting. It's just a great, great time to network with with other counties. Um, a lot of counties up here in the north, you know, are also experiencing the issues that we have. Um, they financially aren't in the dire position that we are, but they're hurting um, jail wise. Um, there's just a lot of different issues that, you know, I feel we can relate with a lot of these counties. And uh, it's just kind of a really great time for that networking. Um, and uh, I'll make sure to continue to uh, be consistent with those meetings. And then um, this past Monday, then also we had an EDC meeting, Oklahoma County EDC, which we have our Vice President Rich Cathos here tonight. Rich, nice to see you. Um, got some exciting workshops coming up um, in the end of September. Uh, September 23rd, we have a QuickBooks workshop, um, and that is going to be facilitated by Andrea Franklin and Wylander Fitzgerald. So we're really looking forward to that. And that is for any business owners of the county or possible future business owners. Um, that is on 6 p.m. at the EDC building, which is Michigan Works, on the 23rd of September. And then the following week, we have another uh, really informal workshop that's going to be improving customer service. So that would be on September 30th at 6 p.m., Feel free to reach out if you guys have any questions for me on that. And then we're getting prepared for our economic outlook breakfast, which will be um, on 30th of October. For the County ADC board, we have a really strong board, a lot of smart people, real good visionaries, and uh, a lot of good things going there. So that's, that's all I have for tonight. Commissioner Scott. Uh, the only meeting I've been able to attend was the airport meeting yesterday afternoon. Our runway is in total reconstruction right now. Um, they're pretty much on schedule. Uh, they ran into a little bit thicker runway than we, than we originally thought we had. Uh, it, it appears that at one time the runway was only 3,500 feet long rather than the 5,000 feet that we have so that that portion of the runway ended up being about four or five inches thicker so in all we got more material that we were able to, to uh, keep that we'll use later probably for uh, maybe maybe for a perimeter road around the airport but it's coming along very well uh, they may be repaving as soon as tomorrow, if not next week. Uh, but we look to have it back open probably uh, September 6th, 7th, 8th, something like that. So oh, good. Yep, it's coming along good. And then while while I was there, the state police came in with two different helicopters and refueled uh, and bought so the state bought fuel from us. So we made a little money while with even though the airplanes can't land. So it was interesting. The, I, the, I, the first one came in and I didn't, I wasn't out there. The second one came in and two guys jumps out with weapons <laughs> strapped right on their chest. Oh, oh. <laughs> I said, for real? Nah, we're just training. Okay. Yeah. So it was interesting anyway. Uh, financially, we're doing very well at the airport. And, uh, We'll be back on track as soon as, as soon as the pavement's laid. That's that's the only meetings I was able to attend lately. Mr. Mayhew? No, I was at a couple townships in the city, and they weren't jumping at the idea of paying for building and zoning. Uh, the good news was that Rose City and a couple of the townships are trying to, they're in talks right now with the school board, I guess, trying to do something with the Rose City School. Mm -hmm. They're talking about, like they did in Hale, they made a community center out of it. So, I mean, it, it's not nothing's going to happen tomorrow, but they're working on it. 
Building and zoning, what did you mean there? Pardon? What did you, West Branch Township, you said building and zoning. Well, we was talking about it, trying to get the townships to pay for it. I asked them, they ain't willing. It's something that we're not, I guess, we don't have to have it. And they talk about getting the townships to pay for it. They ain't real hip on the idea. Good. Yeah, there was a, a sheet put out. I don't know if I gave it to you or not. It was it was by um, parcels of land, not same across the board. And it was just brought up for conversation because West Branch Township and uh, Edwards Township pays for their own zoning. Uh, the county doesn't pay for that. Right. And as far as building goes, building is self-supportive. They don't pay for the building. So building is one one section and zoning is another section. And I would hate to be without zoning because then anything would go, you know, anything would be put anywhere. They wouldn't have any zoning laws and our county wouldn't look too good. Right, you could have a business next door to residential. Or you could have the ghettos next door to a beautiful home, yes. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Simmons? Uh, no, I don't have anything, but I'd like to iterate on the, on the airport. Uh, I went out there with Ben and his vehicle one day. We drove all the way out there, and I was watching them tear the different techniques they had to use because there is a gas line underneath that, that runway, and they couldn't take that part of the runway up. I was like, they did the rest of the runway. And the stuff that was under that runway, the netting and stuff that was under there, what it was used for and stuff. It was just real, real interesting watching them tear that up. So, um, yeah, I thought it was, I'll be glad when it's done, but uh, they're really moving right along with that. I mean, they didn't waste any time tearing that up. I, I didn't have any meetings since our previous meeting. Um, most of mine are in the first two weeks of the month. So the claims and I, I, th I don't think anything else I've attended. Can I add a couple of things? Go ahead. Um, so I, I also met with um, Chris uh, for maintenance and our mechanical inspector. We've been a morning last week. Um, we spent probably about 45 minutes together over in the mechanical room, um, you know, taking a look at the current equipment and uh, just just kind of talking about, you know, what we possibly could do to try to, you know, save some money. And Chris brought up some ideas and so did Craig. And Craig's going to look into a few options. We're going to try to get um, Honeywell um, operates some of our system. And our system, of course, is pretty old. It's, a lot of it still is analog. Um, but they, Chris feels like there could be some savings on a couple items. So, of course, we need to look into that. So uh, we'll continue to move forward um, and hopefully get uh, you know a professional here to look at exactly what we have and see if there's anything we can do immediately that would uh, save us some money. And then I had a conversation with Brian uh, Stein, and he's going to come talk to us regarding the front entrance, the handicap accessible, um, and some of his suggestions and some concerns that he has. So. I did ask him to try to get on to a, a meeting, a committee whole meeting as soon as possible. So that's just my report on that. And uh, one more thing. So next Thursday, we don't have we don't have a meeting, but obviously we have a lot of important things going on right now with the budget, you know, only a month away and some other and hopefully hear back from Ross Common County uh, beginning of this coming week. Would you guys entertain a meeting for next Thursday? We have negotiations all day on Thursday on the 29th. I mean, it would be at 530. Negotiations would be over, wouldn't they, by then? I think by the time we're done with negotiations, that'd be pretty much done. I mean, we just got a lot of, you know, some big things going on in our in line. Is well, let's meet on Friday or Wednesday. If there's, um, I guess between now and then, is there going to be, is there any other meetings taking place that we will have? Obviously, hopefully we'll have some contact with Ross Common County, but is there anything else, any more information that could be or would be gathered between now and then? Off the top of my head, I can't think okay. of anything. It's been a fluid six weeks here, though, so anything could happen. But right now, I don't foresee anything new. If is it also a, a possibility to if, if anything comes up that you 
could call. I mean, I'm up for a meeting, but I'm also up for a week off. Um, if there's nothing that's new between now and then, I wouldn't see a reason to meet. Are you going to come out of negotiations with, with nothing probably concrete? It's just... I would be stunned if we came out with the deal. I would leave open a slight possibility, I suppose, but um, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Anything new comes up? Are you, are you guys okay if he calls us to a meeting? Yeah. You've been communicating, been receiving all the emails. I did want to give a shout out to, to the Equalization Department. They had that uh, activity Monday night, the golfing for uh, the county for overall morale, and Commissioner Simmons and I uh, golfed in that. Um, that was a very nice... Nice event that they held. And there was a lot of participants, so that was appreciated. Go ahead. Make it on. The golf was fun, very chaotic, because <laughs> a lot of us didn't know how to play golf. <laughs> but the most fun was when we socialized afterwards uh, where we were eating and stuff. I mean, there was a lot of fun just socializing and just talking about our own sort of our own personal lives and and just funny things that have happened in our lives and stuff like that. It was I really did enjoy that part the most. The socializing afterwards it was a lot of fun so that was appreciated for that department so what are you guys' thoughts on the meeting i guess i'd like to have one but anybody anybody else in favor of one i am if something pretty concrete comes up if, if not i'm okay with pay i'll go with concrete too okay i like concrete also <laughs> Uh, general public comment, sir. I think you come on up. Do you know the rules? Come on, no. come on up, sir. Come on up, sir. I'll, I'll give them to you. Don't hurt me. <laughs> uh, they are. Speak your, yeah. Right here. Okay. Say your name for the record. Speak only to the chairperson. Stand behind the podium when speaking, which you're fine right there. Uh, limit comments to three minutes or fewer, and follow the direction of the chairperson when speaking. Your name? Mark Suzlak. Did you Did you understand those rules? Yeah, who's the chairperson? You? Yeah. Okay, very good. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Okay, go, so Can you spell your name? C I E S L A K. Mark, behind the podium, buddy. No, he's oh. fine. You're fine. Right there. You're, you're serious, fine. You're fine. We're trying to come to you. Yeah, yes, right. sir. I want to be compliant here. This, yeah, this have a better. seat. Have a seat. Okay. Just, just right. come so everybody in the back can hear you also. Okay. Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you for having me. You had the floor. Okay, very good. Uh, we have a very tense and controversial mm -hmm. issue on hand at Lake Ogemont. Is regarding short-term rentals. Uh, today, I am seeking your help to better understand the county's position on short-term rentals in a residential area. Okay, uh, I have two series of questions. The first being, is there a county law or ordinance prohibiting short-term rentals in a residential neighborhood? My understanding is that there is. So I'm going to direct you to Ryan Veter, our, our ordinance or our administrator. Now is no. basically the time for you to make us a, a public statement for three minutes. Typically, we don't interact. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So can I make a statement in terms of a question? Go ahead. Okay. All right. I'll try. <laughs> uh, and this person, is this person online or that you just referred me to? or Our, our uh, zoning administrator? Yes. Um, he's not, but I can give you, we can give you his office contact information. Perfect. Okay. So then let's hold on. Go ahead. Okay. So I'll present this in a rhetorical questions. Okay. Versus looking for feedback. Okay. Okay. So is there a county law ordinance prohibiting short-term rentals in a residential neighborhood? Rhetorical question. I'll ask that person. And if so, how is that enforced? I'll ask that question as well. Second, that's very brief. Uh, at Lake Ogilvy, there's Summer Door, Summer Door, which is a series of uh, rentals that have been there for decades. Okay, um, and uh, the question is, can those be again rhetorical question? Can those be separated from the discussion of the recent influx of Airbnbs and VRBOs? Can it be a separate issue? In other words, can Summer Door be grandfathered and separated from the recent rentals that were? Having discussion with or on. Um, yeah, that's it. It's basically going to be a, two separate issues. Tim, so, do you have anything to add to that? I would, again, just reiterate what the chair has already said contacting Ryan Veter, uh, and he would definitely be able to address things like grandfathering okay. as far as the ordinance is concerned. Okay. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely the person that um, is at the front of that, that type of issue. Great. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. Ryan Peter's office is in this building. 
Oh, perfect. Okay. So I'm thank sorry, you. It's right down this hallway. Commissioner. Sure. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up. Hey, Rich. Hello. What hat do you have on? Consumers. Oh, go ahead, sir. Yeah. No EDC. <laughs> It's a go ahead. Oh, guys, we have someone that's going to speak. Guys. All right. Good evening. I'm Rich Castle, Community Affairs Manager for Consumers Energy. Uh, for those that don't know me, um, I'm based out of our Taos office, but cover eight counties here in the Northeast region, and includes uh, Ogama. And as mentioned, I sit on the EDC. I'm the vice chair, but uh, I'm here tonight. I believe in your packet, there's uh, this document. This is uh, talks about a reliability roadmap. So I wanted to chat about that. Some of you might have heard this already, but uh, we had some pretty robust, robust goals uh, that we're looking to achieve here as we move forward. And so really the first goal pertains to statewide uh, storm outages may not really apply much to Ogemaw County, but no single outage affects more than 100,000 customers. So uh, think about it from a big picture standpoint. If we have a major storm comes through that 100,000 uh, outage uh, is really a threshold that really gets the Public Service Commission, gets a lot of uh, people riled up because there's a lot of people that are out of power. So, you know, to be able to try to limit that below 100,000 is pretty significant. And as you guys know, we've had some pretty bad storms here lately, and we've reached that threshold. Our goal is to try to keep it below that. But the next goal is the one that really I feel impacts all of us uh, here, at least especially in the northern part of the state, but all customers have power re restored within a 24 hour time period. So we already meet that in many, many cases, but there are situations where, or there are areas within our region where we don't usually do that. And so that's really one of our prime focuses is to try to get everybody restored within 24 hours. And so you probably wondered, how are we going to do that? Well, really what it comes down to is investing in new equipment. So we're looking at investing in fusing, which is going to allow us to isolate these outages to the core area where the outage is really at. And then what that does is that allows us to backfeed the rest of the customers from a different circuit or even a different substation. So that's really one of our, one of our primary focuses, and that's work that's going on currently right now. The other part of it is obviously we're investing more into tree trimming and making it um, um, more uh, often. And then the other part of it is, is we're physically going out and rebuilding the substations, we're rebuilding circuit. So there's a lot of work that's planned here for the near future and, and specifically here in Okemaw County, just this year alone, we are looking to invest over $3 million. So if it doesn't get all spent this year, obviously that's gonna get pushed out into the next year, but there's a lot of work that's being planned not just here in Ogemaw, but our entire region. And so I want you all to be aware that, you know, we are investing into the system, wanting to make sure that things are uh, more reliable for uh, our customers. And so the only other thing I'll mention is we just recently announced our wildfire mitigation plan. Does not really impact Ogemaw a whole lot, but in the area where it would is probably up in the north uh, west corner, Foster Township area, even north of Rose City. Um, so if you go to the FEMA map for wildfire mitigation, um, the map color codes really where the, the key focus areas are for wildfires in Michigan and the northeast northern part of the state is really the focus and the red area or the, the, the most fire prone area and I think you all would understand this is probably northern Roscommon, Crawford and in Dascota County. And so with that, you know, we're looking to look into situations where we can help mitigate wildfires. So what that means is, is we're physically looking at undergrounding some of our circuits in some of these areas. And that goes along with our undergrounding pilot project that we're implementing right now. We started out at 10 miles. We're actually looking at 35 miles now. That doesn't seem like a lot, but what I can tell you is, is when we are looking at some of the more problem prone areas and probably some of the areas that are going to be the hardest to do. Those are the areas that right now are a part of the pilot to make sure that we can move forward with this. So for example, the one that's in our area that was a part of the original 10 mile pilot was over in Taos and it was actually on the lake and me physically going out there and looking at this, when you have landscaping, you have trees, you have driveways, you have you know, uh, uh, I, I mean, you can just imagine what's going on there. How can you take an above ground system and put it underground? That's what we're working through, is try to figure out how you can do that in some of the worst areas. And so that is the, the basis for how we're moving forward. 
What I can tell you is, is I would expect more of this to happen. And when we do know where that's going to happen, I'll try to be as you know transparent about that as possible. So a lot going on. I want to make, make you all aware of it. Um, as we know more, I will try to keep you all on the loop as I usually do, you know, whether it's tree trimming or if we have planned outages, you know, I give you guys those emails. So I'm open to any questions if you have any, but uh, otherwise, uh, just thank you for having me here tonight. Any questions for it? Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, folks. Have a good one. Thanks, Rich. Any other public comment? Come on up, sir. You first. Come on up. Come on up, sir. You know the rules. <laughs> uh, Dan Abzalki from Foster Township. Um, just want to bring it to you, the board's attention. I don't know how many of you guys have been asked about our sheriff's department, and I've had a couple of meetings with him privately about some concerns and questions we have in our particular township. Um, last time Brian and I talked, I went to his office and I asked if he could attend our last meeting. He wasn't there. He should have been. We had pretty healthy meetings that we probably need the sheriff there. But anyway, the concerns we have, um, I need some answers. And I'm sure you guys get questions about the sheriff's department. I think once in a while it'd be nice for them to attend our township meeting and maybe put some of the public uh, questions you know, to bed. Appreciate that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other public comment? Come on up, sir. Uh, Good evening. Good evening. Steve Yukas, Indian Wood Trail, Mills Township, out on Lake Aguamont. How do you spell yeah, Yukas? I'm sorry? How do you spell Yukas? Oh, yeah, what was I thinking? <laughs> y U C H A S Z. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I'd like to expand on what Mark uh, uh, discussed earlier with regard to the uh, uh, the short-term rentals within our residential areas. We have a number of LLCs who have established these short-term rentals in the last few years. And it's creating a certain level of havoc on the lake with regard to the extra traffic, the noise, um, invasive species, which we've tried to address through our bylaws at, at our resort association. Uh, we're, we're no longer allowing them to bring their own personal boats on the lake to try and avoid the invasive species. Hopefully we're, we're out in front of that. Um, but it's creating a lot of hate and discontent on the lake. We have less than two and a half percent of the property owners own these short-term rentals. And a number of them, not all, some of them, they're doing end runs around our association rules. And we have a separate entity called Summerdorf in there, which is another short-term uh, rental facility with about 13 cabins in there. And they were, I think they were initially like fishing cabins but they're using them to circumvent our bylaws as well. So bottom line was we had a vote last March. The majority of the property owners want to address these short-term rentals and get them off the lake, just be done with it. It's a private lake, we built there for a reason. And to have these pseudo frat houses pop up alongside our homes has just been unacceptable. Just some of them have been really bad. So I have Ryan Beater's phone number, but we wanted to bring this to your attention. Chances are you're going to hear about it because it's become something of a contentious issue out there. So I appreciate your uh, your listening to us, and uh, we will reach out to Ryan Peter. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Come on up. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Stephanie Brundle. I was here last year. Um, and addressed the board about a few problems I was having on our lake. Um, I want to say to the commission, I appreciate you all being here and doing your job. And I think Tim does an excellent job directing you. Um, some of the things that you guys do right, you do very well. I'd like to see our board make decisions. We put you here for a reason. Um, the, the taxpayers don't want to see more millages. They, they want to have the people we put here make decisions for us. That's why we put you here. So that's one comment I want to make to you all and just put it in your heads. And, and you know, that's just my opinion. But that's why we put you here, for you guys to make decisions for us. Um, 
The other reason I just wanted to say, um, since I came here last October and spoke to you about uh, the Sheriff's Patrol on our lake, that has improved. They've been on our lake three times this year. That's more than they were there th for three years. So um, it doesn't make me happy that the patrols are still on Lake Ogma every weekend. My tax dollars that I should see uh, and all of the taxpayers should see on all other public lakes, the, the Sheriff's Patrol should be on every public lake, not on a private lake at Lake Ogma every weekend. Um, people from Lake Ogma may disagree, but it's a private lake. I can't go there. They can hire a private company to patrol their lake. Those tax dollars that we pay to have that sheriff department patrolling those lakes should be on every public lake every weekend. There's still things going on. Um, and there's still th many things that can be done to alleviate the problems that are going on on these lakes. We got a lot of traffic on these lakes now that those other lakes down south are gone and they need to be taken care of. Um, we have short term rentals on our lake as well. So it's it's crazy. Anyway, I want to thank you for your time and I appreciate your being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment in the room? Public comment on the phone. Item 17, closed session to discuss collective bargaining unit under MCL 15.2681C. There's not going to be any business after this, correct? Just so everybody is aware. Someone want to make that motion? I'll make the motion that we go into select, uh, go into closed session to discuss collective bargaining under MCL 15.2681C. Motion Commissioner Scott, support from Commissioner Mayhew. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All those votes building up that good report. ABC 12, those hacks are going to blow it up from one back and forth. Oh. <laughs> I got it. Say it to Tim. He uh, currently doesn't know the history of Gary Camp. Just joking. You guys all can. She made it. I'll make a motion to. I'll make a motion to come back in the open session. Short. Roll call vote. Roger Mayhew. Yeah. Charles Welty. Yes. Brenda Simmons. Yes. Craig Scott. Yes. Jenny David. Yes. Mo I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion with support. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thanks. Oh. 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 Oh.